reason. This ain't no, I was like, this ain't no goddamn way. This is my, my natural. I don't need to be ashamed of what the f you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I bring it to Toronto and Atlanta. You coming to Atlanta? How do I feel? I was so mesmerized. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just so blown away by the stamina, the f***ing, the connection, being able to be connected that long with so much You had like so much mother ain't doing all this out here. All those, all those dance numbers and all that. Take your time with it. Breathe it in. Yeah, they yours when you go see this for you. This ain't for nobody else but you. You take that time, boy. I see you. Like, I'm doing baby. <laughs> How the f you in the kitchen? Eating all my cereal. <laughs> and you doing babies in a pink suit. God is the greatest. Won't he do it? Won't he will? Won't he will? Won't he will? So there are a bunch of crazy videos popping up everywhere with Diddy acting like a total creep around other male rappers. And y'all, it looks bad. Word on the street is that Diddy was specifically targeting straight dudes, trying to humiliate them and see how far he could push them. Basically, it looks like it's all about power and control, not his orientation. And it's seriously messed up. People who know what's going on are saying Diddy got a kick out of seeing these guys uncomfortable and scared to stand up to him. Now, what if some of these men were actually okay with it or if they were pressured into doing stuff for Diddy to boost their careers, who knows? But those videos are wild, yo. It's like a laundry list of rappers Diddy supposedly tried to pull this stunt with. Anyway, here are the craziest videos that prove Diddy is a certified weirdo. Diddy and Birdman. So with all these new accusations coming out against Diddy, some folks are drawing parallels to the whole Jeffrey Epstein mess. It's like people are digging up old footage and reinterpreting it in this really grim light. Take for instance, this clip floating around the internet of him chatting with Birdman, congratulating each other with flowers for their success in the business. Now it sounds innocent enough, but Diddy is acting really weird, hanging on Birdman like a high school cheerleader hugging the star quarterback after a winning touchdown. You will definitely be upset. You will definitely be upset. At one point, Diddy even plans to kiss on Birdman's head. You can imagine this video got a whole lot of people talking. One fan said, boy, I know Diddy and Birdman did some unforgivably sinister-ish. And another one added, after y'all get Diddy, make sure y'all take Birdman next, Diddy and Kevin Hart. So far, folks only brought up Kevin's connection with Diddy in connection to that interview he did with him back in the day, where Diddy talked about him wrestling with Usher over Frosted Flakes. Just don't, just don't get, get close, close to the bed. Don't, don't get close to the bed, but it's just like, yo, we wanna thank you for hosting the thing, man, man. You, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it, you did it. No, 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 I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna, if we can, just let's, let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not, I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed. At all. But word on the street is that Diddy later tried to make a move on Kevin too. Now, whether Kevin went along with it or not, well, that's up to you to decide. It's enough. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah. I, I get it. You got it. You look beautiful. It was a I great got move. Diddy and Usher. Now here's where things get actually sinister. So that Frosted Flakes interview I mentioned, well, Diddy said that Usher was just 10 when they used to wake up and wrestle. From day one, we used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. 
I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? So Diddy is 10 years older than Usher. So why was a grown man wrestling in the morning with a 10 year old boy who's not his family? I mean, sure, it could have been totally innocent, but now with all these disturbing allegations swirling around Diddy, this is seriously disturbing. Plus, we know Usher was sent to live at Puffy Flavor Camp when he was like 13 and 14. And it's crazy to think about the things he might have witnessed at that house. Diddy and the game. Now with the game, it's a slightly different story. And that's because a lot of folks are saying Diddy didn't force Game to do anything. Instead, Game allegedly agreed to run around with Diddy for two years and work as his boy toy. So here's the scoop. The game spilled the beans about how Diddy basically buddied up with him, saying they were gonna work on an album together. But get this, for nearly two years, they just jet set it around and Diddy kept showering him with all these lavish presents like fancy watches and blingy chains. I start kicking it with Diddy, right? I ran around with Diddy for two years, uh, damn near. Um, and Diddy, we never went to the studio one time, but he was like, yo, I your demo, that you know, bad boy, bad boy, but hey, Playboy, hey, hey, here go a watch, Playboy, here go a chain, Playboy. I'm like, yo, we ever going rap? He was like, nah, nah. Hey, yo, with the jet late, the jet leaving at five. We going to Miami, Playboy. We going to, you know what I'm saying? We going to New York. We, we in ATL this weekend, Playboy. Pop out, pop out. And I was going everywhere with Diddy. Now, when Game made an appearance on Vlad TV this year, he again brought up how he spent two years chilling with Diddy without making any music. But here's the twist. This time, Game spilled that all they did during those two years was party it up. And in Atlanta, of all spots. Wasn't Puffy interested in, in working with you also? Yeah, Puff, I was running around with Puff uh, for a minute, but we was just uh, we was just partying, man. Puff liked to party. Um, so that's basically all we did. I think I think the whole, the few times I was running around with D-Mac and Puff, uh, we just did a bunch of partying. We might've went to the studio once or twice, but I don't think, I didn't get to record nothing. I was just, you know. Okay, but I mean, Puffy was a huge deal back then still a huge you know, deal. I mean, he's still a huge deal but he's not doing music anymore right. is what i'm saying back then bad boy was on fire mm -hmm. and he's running around with you and you know puffy's a busy guy i was running around with him yeah you were running around with him right. was he talking about signing you or or what exactly happened nah P puff was he wanted to sign me he just you know he was moving around like he had the uh restaurant justin's mm -hmm. in atlanta so we was in and out of that um a lot of parties in atlanta uh with him and uh v and you know big wolf and you know fab and jeezy was just you know i mean fab was already on jeezy was coming uh you know coming up coming to age but uh we just we just party man but here's the kicker game still didn't give any solid reason why he stuck around with diddy for so long knowing fully well that diddy wasn't really interested in hitting the studio with him diddy and ray j now when it comes to ray j there are all kinds of crazy rumors flying around about him and diddy but the craziest one involves claims that ray j tried to set up fabulous to be essayed by Diddy. All right, so here's the backstory. Ray J's feud with Fabulous goes way back, like over a decade ago. It all kicked off when HBO aired this clip of Ray J belting out tunes at a house party thrown by Floyd Mayweather. After seeing this, Fabulous hopped on Twitter to clown Floyd and said, nah, but Floyd's saying we having a concert in my living room and the camera cuts to Ray J singing One Wish on the piano had me in tears. This set Ray J off and he called into the breakfast club claiming he punched Fabulous at the after party for disrespecting him and Floyd. When you want to disrespect me and the money team, and we got seven Rolls Royces outside, and we just made 350 racks on the... Don't disrespect me. I'm going to smack you up again, fool. All right, Yo, so Ray J, let's That's what I'm saying. Saying a Ray J cut? i shocked that nigga in the face, my n So you punched Fab in the face? One time. You, hey, all I'm saying is if you got Fab number, tell that in a picture of his face right now. What? I said, so you, you went up to him at the after party. I'm with what, the what money happened? team right now. We all over uh, here. I swear to God, he running for me right now. I had a hundred fools outside a moon right now. He never left the club. He was scared up in there. He tried to call the police. So when you hit him, what did he do, Ray? Nothing. He fell back because he's a Ray J started talking about Diddy, and then from what he spilled, it seems like Diddy was the one who pushed him to throw a punch at Fabulous. Shout out to my big bro Diddy, because he tried to really be like, look, they was just going in on you. I, talk, I was with Puff last night, and I said, Puff, he said, listen, if anybody talks about me, I'm going to him in the face. And I said, you know what? You know, you right. 
But here's the craziest part. Ray J said that unless Fabulous apologizes to him, he'll get one of his male friends to S.A. him. Charlamagne, Envy, Angela Yee, I promise you, I'ma have Fab call up there and he's gonna apologize to the Breakfast Club. He's gonna apologize to me for being a Two pop That whole team, I'ma smack the that I'm trying to get Fab now, on the line and squash Let's get Fab on the line right now. I'll that you then can't smack him over the phone, right? But... on the phone, that light, and they gonna wait that n***a, <laughs> that nigga over and stick it in that booth. All right, all right, all right. This recording of Ray J threatening Fabulous resurfaced recently, and it's got everyone talking, especially with all the unsettling stuff going on with Diddy. And considering Diddy's history of acting weird around Fabulous, fans are starting to connect the dots and think Ray J might have been referring to Diddy in that recording. And if you caught that Dream Champs with Diddy, Fabulous, and Jadakiss, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Diddy was all over the place, calling Nori Daddy and asking Fabulous if he missed him. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you put my bag Daddy, I like when you, when oh, you right scrambling here, right and scraping for no, no, no. I, I like that. You know, I'll be practicing. I got yeah, there you go. Shit. Got your notes. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to go over with that one. The that one. Just oh. blow it out. It's your no, birthday no. every day. Every day is your birthday on Drink okay. Champs, goddammit. <laughs> I'm in. What was your, what was your wish mm. for this year? Um, Hell my birthday was cool. wealth. Yeah, I spent some, some of the time with my kids. I went out, grabbed a bag, mm. and I spent some more time with my kids. So, you know what I mean? I felt like I was a milestone age. I didn't, I ain't, I might have a party and we had parties, but I was more like just trying to just vibe, like just see where I, look, look back me? on where I became. Did and, you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm I saying, miss, it seems like a thing I miss his birthday party. party. Diddy was really putting the pressure on Fabulous, asking him why they never hung out and partied together. But here's the kicker. Fabulous wasn't just uncomfortable, he looked downright scared of Diddy. Fab even tried to play it off, saying they already had their fair share of partying, and it was almost like he was begging Diddy not to make him party again. It's his birthday party. Puff, man, man but party I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we, we partied for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Eyes, eyes, brother. Oh, eyes, 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 eyes. I understand. I understand. Diddy and French Montana. So you see how Diddy made Fabulous uncomfortable singing happy birthday to him on that Drink Champs episode? Well, folks are now saying this is Diddy's thing and he sings happy birthday before he takes your cakes. Just check out this video of him belting it out for French Montana while French is sitting there shirtless and oiled up. Happy birthday, dear French. Happy birthday to Thank you. Thank you. This is a special birthday for both of us. Diddy and Meek Mill. So Meek recently got dragged into the Diddy drama after Lil Rod's explosive lawsuit alleged that Diddy bragged about betting Meek. Now Lil Rod didn't actually mention Meek's name, but he left enough breadcrumbs for everyone to assume he was talking about him. The lawsuit said, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in physical relations with rapper Redacted, R&B singer Redacted, and Stevie J. I know Stevie J is like, why wasn't I Redacted? And then for the rapper whose name was Redacted, there was a footnote reading, he's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nick. Nicki Minaj. So when this blew up online, there was this video that went viral showing Meek lounging in a pool, presumably at Diddy's house, while Diddy films and calls him Daddy. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Now you already know, fan comments on this video were as wild as the video itself. Someone said, Meek was in so much pain, look how his back was floating. He looked sore and uncomfortable. The face of a victim. Bro looked so uncomfortable, couldn't even make eye contact. He definitely feel dirty inside. Diddy and Rick Ross. Now I know you don't need the mental image in your head of Rick Ross and Diddy freaking off together, but it is what it is. And word on the street is that Ross partook in some of those activities at Diddy's parties. There's this video that recently surfaced showing Diddy and Ross Ross washing cars together and joking about slippery soap. Like the slippery soap. You know, I actually washed the car because I'm supporting my brother. I'm not just buying slippery soap. I'm actually using it myself. So, you know, just, just stay tuned to see 
Diddy and YK Osiris. So YK Osiris has been pretty much MIA from the spotlight since the Diddy allegations exploded. But word on the street is that this young man was traumatized by the industry and there are even some wild rumors going around that YK was passed around between Diddy and Drake. So rumor has it that Diddy was paying YK to be his boy toy and took him to Jamaica on a luxury vacation. When YK later appeared on The Breakfast Club, they asked him about this rumor. But YK just nervously laughed and claimed he was in Jamaica with a girl. Did he say he was Diddy's boy toy? <laughs> uh, what? I, I was in Jamaica with him. Oh, I see it now. See? <laughs> this is how YK Osiris in Jamaica with his alleged boo Diddy. <laughs> see? Oh. You in Jamaica with Diddy though? Yeah, what, he what, said what yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I was uh, with a shawty. All right, but Diddy yeah. was there. No, he was a whole other different. Oh, so they just made this up? Yeah, they made it up, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, and in that same video, YK spilled the beans about his tight bond with Drake. Apparently, there was this viral video where Drake made YK sing in the crib to settle a gambling debt. But YK insisted that Drake is more like family to him, and he shot down any idea that Drake was trying to embarrass him or anything like that. But Drake, remember you had to sing for Drake? Nah, but Drake, Drake, my brother though, like that's that's my boy. So it's like when we bet and gamble, like it's, it's really ain't about no money. It's really about this fun. But see, there's another wild video making the round where YK is doing setups on Drake's private jet while Drake's artist Baka is taunting him. Now some people thought it was all just playful banter, but others noticed that YK didn't seem to be enjoying himself one bit. In fact, he literally looks traumatized. Now I know some people have turned this Diddy situation into a big joke, but let's not forget that Diddy is facing serious and disturbing allegations. And now he's officially being investigated by Homeland Security. So it remains to be seen how this will play out. As for all these rappers who spent years around Diddy, fans have mixed reactions. They're saying some of these men like Usher and YK Osiris, for example, were definitely victimized at a young age and let down by other adults. But fans are also pointing out that some of these rappers were old enough to know better and were probably willing participants in Diddy's shenanigans. Although they probably didn't know Diddy was allegedly secretly recording them. One fan said, he was giving record deals to these men and then in return asking for S favors. Diddy has secret cameras all over his house, including bedrooms. Then after that, he blackmailed them. He did a comb stain. And someone else wrote, I think this man is evil for real. I'm not talking about his sus moments. If he that way, whatever. But I think he got some very dark, evil things in his closet, man. Something's not right with this dude. But let me know what you think about these videos. Do you think there's something more sinister here than just Diddy being sus? Drop your comments below and stick around for this next video.